welcome to episode number 78 of the P-Geek Podcast. And as always, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Now, I'm really excited today to dive into a topic that I've wanted to record in a podcast for quite some time. We did it as a webinar in 2016, and it was really well received. And it's actually part of the P-Geek workshops um, that we run all around the globe. And you can go and if you want to join a workshop, you can head to thepeergeek.com forward slash events and see where we're headed next. But this particular topic is all about a particular framework that you can use to help you sort of use technology more effectively in your practice, whether that's a PE classroom or any other general classroom that you're operating in. And um, the great thing about the framework is that it sort of steps you through some of the evolution that technology can take you on when you start to implement it with thought into your teaching. And um, it's it's this sort of framework and this sort of thinking that I, I really sort of think brings about the best results when it comes to utilizing tech. Now, I'm a big fan of frameworks. I love them. I think they're, uh, they are part of society for a reason. You know, we have frameworks in so many different facets of our life. Um, and they make it possible for everyone to get a similar result by following the framework. And, you know, if you think about many of the things that happen in society, and, and I mean, I always think of pilots when they get into the cockpit, there's a framework of steps they go through to ensure that they get the same result uh, each and every time. And obviously it's incredibly important that they do that. But in many facets of our lives, these frameworks drive um, results and they help us normalize the procedure so that the same thing can happen each and every time and this can be sort of achieved with utilizing tech in a peer practice and the framework that we're going to talk about is the SAMA model now the SAMA model is not something that I have ever um, it's not it's not my invention it, it's one that I really resonate with and find um, quite easy to explain to teachers it's not the only model uh, there, are, there are some advantages and, and disadvantages to it and other models, but I, I think it's one that really sort of spells out my personal beliefs around technology uh, and how it can be transformative and uh, it sort of helps with the thinking around um, making sure that we do it in a meaningful context and um, for the right reasons. So essentially SAMA is the idea that, it's an acronym, it's the idea that you have this continuum of depth at which technology can be implemented into a practice and you know starting with the s that stands for substitution and this is sort of the, the simplest thing that you know people do when they when they get something that's a technology or a new tool and what they do is they they basically use the technology as a direct substitute for whatever was being done previously in that context um, so, I mean, there's, there's not a lot of depth in this equation. Uh, it's literally no functional change. It's the same thing. It's just done digitally. And, you know, many of the, the things that you, you hear people talk about, and even myself, um, are substitution based. And if that's the only argument that you were going to bring forth to your administration uh, around the power of technology in your practice, um, there's not a lot of evidence to suggest that you know, it's going to benefit people or change the activity or engage students in a different way than previous. It literally is the same activity just done in a d technology or digital sort of format. So obviously in this sort of equation, we want to move from here to some of the deeper opportunities that exist with technology that only technology can provide. So if we move to the next letter, which is the A, we're looking at augmentation. And with augmentation, this is where technology acts as a direct substitute, but it, it, it does have some sort of functional improvement. Um, and, you know, maybe the classic example of this would be uh, if, if Word documents, say, typing up a, uh, a report is a direct substitute of typing, uh, sorry, of handwriting, then the augmentation of that would be that there are some functional improvements in Word that make it possible for you to, um, you know, edit your words on the same page, change the font size, um, do spell check, grammar correction. That would be an example of augmentation. So 
it is a substitute, but there are some inherent improvements that are part of that. Um, as opposed to if you try to do that sort of thing without the technology, um, you know, handwriting your letter, you really can't sort of spell check it quite as effectively. Uh, you can't, you know, s delete a whole paragraph and insert a paragraph over the top of it. Um, so that's some functional improvement um, that's, you know, part of that, and that's the augmentation step. So, so far we've got substitution, which is directly substituting the technology with no functional change. We've got augmentation, which is uh, the technology being used with some functional improvement. And the next part of the, um, the SAMA progression is modification and this is when things start to get uh, interesting for me and you know this is when the technology allows for you to have some significant task redesign so like for example rather than doing a report you know the, your students or your kids because of technology may be able to speak their words and um, you know turn that report into a narrated piece with some music and um, different elements then obviously they, they can't do that with a handwritten piece of paper so the task can be changed because of what the technology provides. The final step of the equation before we get into a couple of PE specific examples is redefinition. Now I would say that the vast majority of tech use in a PE or educational context rarely scratches this spot. You know, this is some deep thought. This is some careful attention to planning and making sure that um, you know things are well crafted. Uh, but redefinition is where the creation of tasks that were completely inconceivable is now possible because of the technology. So, um, you know, before the tech, this would not have been possible because of the tech. The task that you get the students to do or submit as an assessment is completely um, new. And, you know, in that sort of example before, it, it could have been rather than handwriting the story, maybe the technology has made it possible for them to film the story, act out the story, uh, edit the story, and, and, you know, sort of showcase it and publish it to YouTube. So you can see here that the same sort of creative outlet that began as a piece of paper uh, with some handwriting through the SAMR approach and the SAMR lens, we can see how the technology um, has evolved and how the task has evolved with it um, as we sort of progress. So in a phys ed context, you know, what does that look like? So what I've done is I've gone and sort of applied the SAMR model to an anatomy lesson. And, you know, in the, in the um, very, you know, early beginning phases, the augmentation uh, sorry, the, the substitution approach would be basically viewing a PDF on a digital um, book. So, you know, rather than having, let's say you're teaching anatomy, you've got a printed book and the kids are reading the, pr the printed book, the, augment, the substitution version of this would be a digital textbook. So nothing's really all that different. Um, they're just reading it in a digital format. If you took this further, then maybe the augmentation of this could be that the digital textbook has in it some improvements in that you could search words, you could navigate chapters, you could um, maybe click and interact with some visuals um, that are part of the digital textbook. So you can see how it's sort of progressed a little bit. And then, you know, the modification option here in the same, so the same activity, teaching anatomy, could be the use of an app like iMuscle where rather than saying uh, here's the, the piece of paper and you're looking at the muscles, the modification task is here's a three-dimensional app that lets you sort of move around the whole body, tap on muscles and see the activities that sort of can be performed uh, with that in mind. So that's sort of significant redesign of the initial task because of the tech. And then I guess the redefinition for this particular activity would be uh, the use of an app like 4D Anatomy, which uh, basically is augmented reality. And when you showcase the iPad at a piece of paper or the Android at a piece of paper, it brings to life an, an, an animation on your in your real world that um, you can interact with. So 
it's sort of a task that was previously inconceivable without the technology enables you to design learning opportunities around that task that just would not have been possible without the technology. So, you know, if we think about that SAMA approach right back at the beginning, digital textbook, no change. Next step, you know, putting in some functional improvements in the digital textbook so you can search and um, save items and look at videos, etc. Next step, the modification, being able to use an app that allows you to three-dimensional view it. And then the final step, the redefinition is, you know, how can you do something which is immersive um, with some augmented reality. So the, the foundation allows you to think about what would be a good use of, um, you know, your time and investment in preparing lessons that are meaningful. And uh, if it's just substitution tasks, you can probably think that, um, you know, it's it's probably not the best the best idea. Now, the next um, opportunity I want to share with you is, you know, the, the looking at the idea of technique analysis or skill analysis through a SAMR lens. In the direct uh, task that you may have done in, in a, without no technology at all, it could be a simple checklist that people tick and complete um, around their technique. So tick the box if this these things were present. Well, in substitutive terms, the direct substitution of that would be a Word document where people can tick the boxes in a Word format. There's, it's a substitute. There's no real functional improvement, um, but you know it, it sort of is using text, so it's a substitute. If you took this a bit further, that same task of analyzing technique, you could look at the idea of um, augmentation, and it could be the use of something like a Google Form, whereby people can fill out the form, their results are submitted and can be sort of calculated and processed. Um, the Google form can have images, it can you know maybe have moving videos as well. So you can see it's still very similar in, in its uh, the way it's structured but there are some functional improvements to it. The next sort of step in this process that um, allows you to come up with maybe a completely different task altogether would be the combination of video and say a Google Form. So if you're video recording the students and they can go back and watch their own video and then analyze themselves, well you can see how that task would be inherently way different to the very beginning task which was simply doing uh, a piece of paper um, and ticking some boxes. So the technology allows for massive modification um, of the previous conceived task. Now in the final um, step, the maybe the complete redefinition of that task would be using a tool like Huddle Technique which allows you to do annotation and telestration and sort of um, drawing on the video and talking over the video and recording a example demo over the top of the video and, and obviously that would not have been possible had it not been for the technology and an app like Huddle Technique so the task that you set can be completely redefined by the technology that's available. I mean, you just could not have issued this task pre-technology. So, those couple of examples are um, how the SAMR foundation and the framework can help you think more deeply about the specific task that you want to introduce technology to, and how you can extrapolate some more um, opportunities that may exist. Now, I shouldn't. I'm not going to sort of say that if you do something that's considered redefinition, it's better learning. That's really not what the point of this is. But the whole point of you thinking about the SAMR um, framework is that if you have an opportunity to introduce some technology, this framework can help you to really plan out what you can do with that tech, where you can head, and make you think about whether you should just, you know, roll in a, a technology into class that's a direct substitute. You know, I, I, I don't think you should. Um, obviously, there are opportunities with that as well, but if it's a simple substitution and um, that's all you're doing, then you're really missing out on some of the real power that exists with um, you know, doing this in a much more deeper context than, say, the modification or the uh, redefinition stages. So uh, hopefully that's been useful. That's the framework that I use as part of our workshops and you know, all the tasks that we do follow this SAMR lens. Uh, we always reference it and reinforce it. And uh, I've, it's proven to be really effective when it comes to planning for meaningful use of tech in PE classrooms or in lots of other classrooms around the globe.
And if you wanted to take it to the next level, then feel free to join our free purposeful planning webinar at topeageek.com forward slash plan. It's a 45 minute webinar which comes with a certificate that you can use for your professional development records. Um, the, the whole basis of the webinar is to sort of take you through the, the planning that goes into thoughtful use of technology in phys ed, uh, including the lesson planning framework that I recommend and use, as well as a bit of a look through that SAMR model with some visuals to help sort of reinforce the different stages um, that you go through. So I'm going to leave it there. I look forward to returning in episode 78 as we feature another teacher doing some amazing things in their practice. Speak soon. Thank <laughs> you.